But Sam Flynn, I want to continue the conversation to uh, discussing training camp and some of the guys that stood out because I would be remiss if I didn't discuss the one that I think has been in the news the most over the last couple days uh, ever since really you had pads on, and that's Lions rookie, second round pick, Brian Branch, DB out of Alabama. And this is someone that, you know, I was super excited for. Again, I, I still believe the man was a first round pick. If you watch Inside the Den, even they thought he'd be gone earlier than, than they thought. But still, Brad Holmes had his mindset on getting Brian Branch. He, he gets him. And now looking, you know, forward to this upcoming season for a secondary that has so much depth, it's hard to, to not see Brian Branch out there. It's hard to imagine a scenario where Brian Branch doesn't see the field almost immediately, Sam Flannel, because the guy can play in the box. He can play uh, safety. He can play corner. The guy is essentially Jameer Gibbs in the secondary. Mm. Let's, just, let's just be real about Brian Branch because I'm obviously very, very high on him. I think that his talent and his upside is to be the single best player in this secondary. Mm. Maybe not year one, but as the years go on because you mentioned it, it's his versatility utility it's his smarts it's the fact that he came from the Nick Saban system and was pretty much a starter from from his freshman year on and he has yep. not looked back since and you look at even for this year when it comes to Brian Branch as much as we like what the Detroit Lions did in this secondary a couple of the players I would say are have some injury concerns like Emmanuel <laughs> Mosley is coming back from injury Tracy Walker is coming back from injury even CJ Gardner Johnson missed five games last year and I'm not sure if, if Brian Branch could say take the spot of Emmanuel Mosley I'm not sure if he's going to be guarding anybody's ex receiver or anybody like that but he can play slot corner he can play safety he can play in the box he can roam and he just has one of the most impressive and diverse set of skills I think I've seen from a safety coming out. I think the one thing that could hurt him individually when it comes to usage is the fact that he's coming into such a stacked secondary because if he was playing on a team that had, say, a lesser secondary or a less deep secondary. I think he's a day one starter. I think he has an impact similar to what Jaquan Brisker and Jalen Petrie did last year as rookies. I'm not saying he's the same kind of player, but I think I think what might hurt him individually is he won't get as much usage. But if he did, if, say, somebody suffers an injury, God forbid, I think Brian Branch could get plenty of snaps, maybe even start some games. And I think his ceiling, I'm not saying it's likely, I think his ceiling is to be right up there in defensive rookie of the year because I will say it again because it just makes me salivate and I don't think his stat line as last year at Alabama gets talked about enough because it is that impressive. 90 tackles, 14 for loss, three sacks, and Ooh. two interceptions along with seven pass deflections. I mean, he's a Swiss army life. He's a jack of all trades, but he's a master at like all of them too. So Brian Branch, seeing him, seeing clips from what he's doing in training camp, hearing what you and Lucas have to say, I am just on cloud nine because I think one day this is a guy that could be a perennial pro bowler, maybe make an all pro or two. And I think he is going to ultimately have a better career than any single person the Lions have in the secondary right now. And they've Oof. got a lot of damn good players. So that's saying something. In the chat <clears throat> is speaking on it too, which I think is the biggest point for Brian Branch with Nick Saban to be a, a secondary player, to be a corner, a safety, and to come out and, and start as a true freshman and have really complete trust from, from Nick Saban to Brian Branch that he's going to go out there and execute his job at a high level for a true freshman, Sam, with all the, yeah. the mental fortitude, all the, the, the things that were put on Brian Branch's shoulders, he handled it handled it really well and was one of the most important players on Alabama's defense due, through his tenure. So, again, I think that speaks volumes for a guy as a true freshman to be, to be starting in Alabama secondary, a secondary that typically doesn't let true freshmen out there. No, it doesn't. Uh, I think it speaks volumes to Brian Branch, and I think, you know, with Emmanuel Mosley on a one-year deal, they expect that, you know, a guy like Brian Branch will kind of fill that void moving forward. Uh, same with C.J. Gardner-Johnson. One-year deal. Who knows if they could re-sign him. But this is why you have Brian Branch. He could play corner. He could play safety. He could play in the box. It, it doesn't matter where you put him. The guy's a tackling machine. You know, who goes step for step with Khalif Raymond, Lucas, <laughs> who I think, you know, that's not spoken about either. Yeah, that's that's the sneaky thing. All we hear about is uh – about the, coming out of the draft was that he didn't have the high testing score that you want. But if you go and you compare him to Tyron Matthew, exact same 40 time, exact same 10-yard split, pretty much the exact same combine stats, and you go back to the roles at LSU and Alabama. Both played safety, both played cornerback, both returned punts and kicks. This is a steal just like Tyron Matthew was, and I think they're just copying clone of each other. I mm -hmm. think the Lions hit it out of the park, 
It's very similar to when Derwin James fell, and everybody's like, what the Ooh. hell is Derwin James falling? The players aren't similar, but just the value you're getting out of Brian Branch. It's There was no way that that man should have been a second-round pick. Yeah, no, for a guy you know that you could stick anywhere in the secondary, talk about his size all you want, I'll take him. Yeah. I'll take a guy like Brian Branch. I mean, that's that's somebody that you know is, is kind of the polar opposite of Jeff Okuda. Like somebody that, and this yeah. isn't just to take a shot at Jeff, but this is just reality with Brian Branch. I mean, the guy is a tackling machine. Yeah. And he, what was a big problem with the secondary last year? They couldn't tackle. Yeah. So I would say it's a positive. It's a positive for Brian Branch to be in the secondary, Sam Flannery. Yeah, Lucas, and you mentioned Tyron Matthew. I know we've had this discussion off air, and when you first hear about it, you're kind of like, <laughs> uh, I don't know, but when you really look into the numbers, when you look at the combine testing, even when you look at what Tyron Matthew did in his last year at LSU, he was another one that just filled up the stat sheet. The stats such a, were similar. It's not <laughs> like there was different. And, and that's the thing, and that's why I always, I know I, I beat it like a dead horse, like, like at nauseum, how great Brian Branch's last season was at Alabama because it was Tyron Matthew esque. Maybe if Tyron Math if Brian Branch had had a couple of more defensive touchdowns or maybe did more returning kicks, he might have been somebody that you could look at as a Heisman Trophy finalist style defensive back the same way that Tyron Matthew was. And Tyron Matthew, I I just said a couple of minutes ago that I could absolutely see Brian Branch being a guy who makes multiple Pro Bowls, makes a couple of All Pros, maybe even is one of those Defensive Player of the Year fringe kind of guys. I know it's hard for a safety to win it, and that might lead to a gold jacket, kind of like the one that Tyron Matthew is going to get. So I don't hate the. Laporta. I mean, maybe. <laughs> maybe, maybe you, you know, Lucas, I hope that you're right. I just think it was a little bit premature, but but I don't think. But, oh, you think? But I also, but I'm here saying that talking about Gold Jacket and Brian Branch in the same sentence, and he's a rookie as well. I'm just not guaranteeing it like Lucas is for for Sam Laporta. But I think the Tyron Matthew, if if Brian Branch has a Tyron Matthew like career, I think we would all be doing back. Oh yeah, a hundred percent. And I I really do believe you'll see Brian Branch early on, even at maybe corner. Because you look at the quarters they have. Cam Sutton, okay. Emmanuel Mosley, who's dealing with injury, but we'll see. If he comes back, he'll obviously be playing. But beyond that, Jerry Jacobs? I mean, and Jerry Jacobs is a dog, don't get me wrong, but I think Brian Branch, they could go neck neck and neck. I mean, you were seeing Brian Branch go step for step with Cleef Raymond. You'll yeah. see him uh, competing with Amon Ross St. Brown. I mean, he's getting you – know, talk about iron sharpens iron. He's getting to face Amon Ross St. Brown, who we believe is a top-10 receiver yes. uh, all the time in practice. So – I think Brian will be seeing the field much earlier than people expect, not only because of injury, but because the dude, he, he's too damn good. Uh, I mean, I, I don't think you're going to be able to, to, to deny him from the field, uh, even with the secondary depth you have currently. I think there'll still be uh, some, at some point, uh, where you see Brian Branch, you're, you're going to need him, especially, I think, against the run. Brian Branch is somebody that, you know, not saying he would have changed everything in that Carolina game, but somebody that you can depend on to go make a tackle. Yes. They didn't have a lot of those guys last year, Sam Flynn. Yeah, and this is with no disrespect to the other guys, but Brian Branch, I think he's got more upside than Tracy Walker. I think he's a better player. I think he's yes. going to be a better player than C.J. Gardner-Johnson. No disrespect to him. But you also mentioned C.J. Gardner-Johnson might be gone after this year. I think he's a better player than Emmanuel Mosley, and Emmanuel Mosley is another one that, despite playing very, very well when he was healthy last year, he was only healthy for five games. And I think he's better at his position than even Cam Sutton is at his as the number one corner. So I guess the bottom line is I think Brian Branch is going to be great. I think that if he gets the opportunity, he can be great this year. Because another thing about Brian Branch that I don't even know if we talked about enough, but we kind of inferred it, is that I think he's a guy that is just one of those day one type starters. He's very oh, pro yeah. ready. You could he's plug him into any yes. system. Any yes. defense he could plug into and start day one. That's why when people are like, oh no, we should sit him. No, you absolutely should not. Brian Branch is a talented player that's going to increase the ceiling of this defense. And he's got like, like football IQ in droves. Yeah. And you even saw that during his uh, combine interviews. And you saw that and everything that you read about Brian Branch that you see about Brian Branch is that he is smart. He's technically sound. As I always say, the only reason that he fell to the Lions at 45 was because of his 40 time, I, I will say. It was 458. It doesn't look that impressive on the surface. But first of all, 458 isn't that bad. And second of all, he's got that football speed. That's what I thank you, yes. Flannel. That's what I was going to say. There's a difference between running a 458 yep. and be able to cover half the field while the ball's in the air. Brian yep. Branch, go and watch his film. I believe it was against LSU this year where he absolutely lit a wide receiver up and he flew 
from the opposite hash, not even the same hash, from the opposite hash, with the receiver going in motion and lit him up and force an incomplete pass. Well, what about this one? Uh, Mike G says, Flannel, is Brian Branch better than Will Johnson? No. <laughs> no, I mean, I mean oh, wait, wait, wait. Right now, obviously. Right now, obviously. But Will Johnson is a once-in-a-generation type corner. He is going to be a top 10 or maybe top 5 draft pick when he comes out. And I, I will personally guarantee that. Oh, he, okay. was our, he was one of the best cornerbacks in the entire country last year as a freshman. Okay. If he could have come out after his freshman year, he would have been a first-round draft pick. No disrespect to Brian Branch. You know what? I'll, 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 I'll meet me halfway, Mike G. Oh, Brian Branch geez. and Will Johnson, both future. <laughs> Gold jackets. How about that? 